great. Uh, I got one. Here's what I'm really trying to do is to put something together. Oh, that's thick, isn't it? Yeah. It, this started it all. It's kind of the Bible. There aren't too many people collect around. I'm not surprised anybody uh, come out with anything. And, and in his uh, knowledge mix, no. In his introduction, my greatest hope is that this wo uh, book will inspire other drummers and collectors to research the history of their favorite drum and write it down and share it with the rest of us. Mm. And I. John Aldridge, he's a, John everything from a teacher to his name sounds familiar. He publishes a little paper called A Not So Modern Drummer. He's from Connecticut, he's down in uh, Nashville. Mm -hmm. and he put this out, and the guy wrote one for Ludwig, and uh, I got it written down. Another guy wrote one on. Uh, uh, Michigan wrote one on the history of the Leedy Company, mostly in Indianapolis. And just this year, a guy came out with one on the history of the Gretsch Company. So I only left two of the big boys that are recognized from USA, historical, you know, none of this Remo stuff, no, no, no foreign. That leaves Slinger, Leonard Rogers. And, and I've been thinking for a while. I knew it was just, it's a big project, you know. Mm -hmm. Guys gonna hesitate. I never really looked for it. And uh, I thought, well, gee, uh, Slinger would be good because you know they made a lot of drums for a long time rogers is mostly heads for the first hundred years you know? yeah see i'm awful close to cubby and there's no heck yeah keep it in the area <laughs> yeah i mean you know i'm close enough and uh, well if i the only concerns that i get enough in, can i get enough information and can i yeah, yeah that's the problem you know it's there's uh, it's, it's a short it's many people's passed away gee many I mean, 95 of the original people that started, they're very rich. Oh, I got a, yeah. I do have a... Buddy Belson? Oh, no, he's not in. Buddy Rich went... Buddy Rich... Belson's in... No, wait. Belson's in Rogers. Yeah. You see, Buddy used to be in, and he'd switched. Buddy oh, Belson. Yeah. Now, he's on Dreamo now. He's in, you know, owns a lot of stock. That's the same picture we had. Oh, yeah. You see, I've looked high low for my catalogs. I can't find them. But don't give up on me. I'm going to keep on looking. When I find them, I'll give them to you. But I, th I think I have one like this. This is a, this is right after they moved to Dayton. Okay. Well, I got the older ones. This I got one of those too somewhere. There's a, yeah, because in here it says CBS. They mentioned mentioned Covington. Now I got a rifle to I just was out at Pleasant Hill and I was over here at the museum. She didn't have anything. But I said, okay, well, I'll have something for you then. Just give me time. Any pictures of any time? Uh, <clears throat> She had the uh, Stillwater Valley Advertiser from 1968. And I photographed the article on the Fine. funeral of Joe Thompson. Oh. That's all she had. And I said, well, you'll you see me again. I'm gonna did you go to, did you check with Pippa Call? Not yet. No. Okay, the reason I'm asking because I'm thinking 1967 or 68, we had fire. It was right after they moved to Dayton. Yeah. We're still doing some work out here. So we had a Dayton warehouse uh, right after CBS took over. I can't tell you. I, I don't even remember for a year. But um, see, let me start the game. That's yeah, chronological order. When I heard in in 1960, <coughs> things were really starting to come to a, a head. You know. They moved into the the new building by that time, and and uh, Roger's name was really catching on, you know, at that time. The quality jumped way up. Yeah, especially in '64. And we started shipping more and more and more, and you know, that got out of sight. Uh, when CBS took over, I'm thinking '68. They needed someone to go to Dayton because all those people were new that knew the catalogs, all the part numbers and everything. And since I was there for eight years, by or seven, whatever it was, I knew all the catalog numbers, all the parts, and you wouldn't put them in customer service. 
So I answered the telephone. This guy called me and said, hey, I need a 325 stand or something like that. And, you know, yeah, I know what you're talking about. So I jot it down to get his address. And so why you know how that kind of stuff works. But right before I went to you, David, I'm not going to get here myself here. Why are we organizing it? Don't worry. Um, we had a fire. About a year before that, they added orange to the back of the factory there in Covington. Yeah, the, the, the cement block? Cement area. block area. Yeah. What, what year was the fire? I'm thinking 67. I'm thinking 66 we added on. 67 we had to fire. What caused the fire? It was um, some kind of heating iron that they heat up. The glue or something, I can't remember. It happened on second shift. Um, caught the pearl on fire. Ooh. Plastic. And it, it destroyed the whole upstairs of the new building. Of the new building? How about the old building? Was it wood? Or? No, the old building was a block building also. Have you been up there? Uh, just what I could see from the road. I did come up the driveway and look at the... I haven't gone into it yet. I will. If you, if you would like, I'll take you up and show you. Um, 67 was a fire. I'm thinking 67 was a fire. Like I said, it was in the pickle call, I'm pretty sure. I'm sure, yeah. Um, we had to pull, I had to pull night duty up there. We didn't have any guard or anything at that time, so at night time, I they got to have somebody there to guard the place because they pulled back in was open. They just blew out the roof and everything. I mean, it was pretty bad. Took the second floor. We're all on the second floor. And that's where we did most of the... Uh, Hi. How you doing? Um, gluing the, the uh, plastic on the shells. And that's where all of our plastic was stored, all of our drum shells. Glue and, glue and all that. And right up ahead of that, then was assembly. Uh, on the second floor, too? Yeah. Did all the purling up there, too, huh? Mm -hmm. The second floor was the main floor for. Assembling the drums and uh, testing the drums and shipping the drums. Run in was they made uh, all the uh, bass drum beaters by hand. They stiff strong with felt in the main floor. See when when Joe from down here brought Rogers drums down here. He, he was involved with, with the man that, uh, that didn't Roger Strips. His name was Henry Bridgman. Yeah. And they were together with, in this company called uh, Trophy Products. And Joe made the ukulele banjos for that company. You remember any of those? Oh, yeah. Trophy. Henry, uh, Henry Bridgman. Little short Jewish guy right here, kinky. Henry. <coughs> His company was Trophy Products up in Cleveland. Mm -hmm. He and Roger Strums. They were kind of cooks together, I'm, I'm pretty sure. If I can remember right, you know, it's been. Yeah, they had a couple of uh, factories in New Jersey before they moved here, but they didn't do much in the way of drums. By parts, and more or less the same. Way. I think Joe started the drum factory. There's a brick building up there, right behind the house. Mm -hmm. I think that's where he started originally, back in. I don't know where it was. 
I was thinking in the early 50s. Yeah, 53 maybe. 53, that's when it was. Cause that's when uh, Don Martin graduated from high school and he went to work right there right away, 53. Yeah, it was 53. Yeah, I guess Martin's still around, I guess. He's in California. Yeah, but yeah, I guess retired. His sister still lives here. See, Don Martin's mother and dad started working at Roger Strums. He was probably, probably the uh, first two people that were ever hired. And then Don came along after he graduated. Maybe Martin still lives here in town. Her name's uh, Camry. She didn't work there? No, she didn't work here. Her mom and dad and and her brother. Maybe mm -hmm. the Kingery? Kingery. Ruby Creek Kingery. I get all that kind of <coughs> Were there any company colors? You don't know who made their sticks for him? Any chance? Um, you see a truck driver, supervisor, and tested drums. A lot of the stuff you wouldn't be familiar with. Hmm. He made all this stuff. Look, they uh, <coughs> pour their own luck casings there? <coughs> no. When, that, when I first started there, they made, before they went to the cast, they had... Stamped out the brass ones. They had brass, and we stamped those out in the basement. And went to the... Uh, and then later on, when, when Joe came up with the swivel matic, which is that type of holder, and it has a swivel type, had the ball on the end. Yeah. Remember that? I got one downstairs. Uh, then they started going to this new design. Much stronger. Mm -hmm. You know, it was a uh, port and mold die cast, uh, 64, I think. And, uh, yeah, you don't remember where they got them from. Um, they probably designed the mold and had somebody else. Yeah, they did. It was, uh, I used to pick them up. It was in, it was in uh, Clayton. Clayton. Mm -hmm. Then we had the, um, the claws. Same place in the holders. Made a little machine saw from Dayton on the south. East side of day, west side of day. How about the uh, shells? Came in with that. Uh, shells came in from um, Jasper Keller. Tension rods, strainers, butt ends. Oh, oh man. That's that's the only thing that we let's see. We we made the uh, we started making our own uh, stands and stuff right there, stamping those out. And uh, uh, we always made our own snares in the basement. But that was a, well, I'd like to have one of those jigs. Uh, tough to do freehand. We're even close to it. You know, you just have little. 
20 slaves sitting on the end, and they just laid them in there and just slaughtered them. At one time, I built uh, Donasonic's uh, frames, uh, assembly. What they done is they, uh, they went ahead and made these up. And then we had these frames made outside the shop. I can't even tell you where. And when they come in, I had this surface plate, and it's about, this is about as wide as this. And it had a light behind it. And I'd sit this, and I'd poke these snares onto that frame. And, well, first of all, I'd take the frame, put it on the surface plate, and straighten it. If it's out of whack, make yeah. sure it's yeah. make sure that the ends of them were even square. Yeah, yeah. And it's then definitely must. And then I put that on the, the frame and set it up. And then you hit each side, you know, try to get it squared up. And if it wasn't square, you take it out and have a little table there to have a like something like this here. You stick the you know, this frame on there and you twist it one way and mm -hmm. set it back up. Yeah, well, that's key that's, to keeping them from buzzing and making proper contact with the head. And, and then, uh, so we got squared away while then was ready for the uh, snare drums. Is that particular one say, Roger? I got a few. I don't use them, but I, I say them. Yes. Yeah, it's said Rogers, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's in pretty good shape. Mm -hmm. I had a dollar sign. I think I sold it. I should have made it in there. Yeah, at least that one. Yeah. There's a six and a half, too. They're hard to find. Good ones, yeah. At least they're the, you know, the, the uh, five, five and a half. Yeah. Now, to melt the uh, solder, use a, a torch? They use the little torch. Heat the whole thing up. Heat the whole thing, just lay it down. Just lay it down. I think they have little metal things that lay each one of these fires in. I remember right. Just space them out, right? Space them out, right. And then they, then they had that sitting in that fixture, and then they just slaughtered it. Imagine they moved most all that equipment to Dayton. Yeah. Trashed it. I imagine it went with the auction, like everything else went. Oh, well, they had an auction there. Yeah. Unfortunately, I didn't make it. We still with it. Yeah, the, the, about the only thing. When they got down to Dayton, they weren't there very long until they moved it out. Yeah, what, you know what years they were down there? 67 and 8? Well, they didn't move the factory down there until probably 68 and then 69 they were going. <coughs> that's the year that I left. You did go that far. You went to, yeah, Dayton. Yeah. I went to Dayton before that, too before they moved the factory down because we had a warehouse. That's where all the orders came in. Uh, everything was handled there with, uh, uh, except for uh, assembly. It was handled in Dayton. You remember the month or anything that the uh, Covington factory closed? Mm -hmm. See, I was trying to, my brain was trying to figure out who would be left to know that kind of stuff and there's not really I guess a uh, Bob Kurtner. Yeah, Bob would probably know. He was in purchasing. He's now with a machine shop in Sydney. A guy from Jackson Center called me and told me that. Dale Davis. No? Or, uh, da yeah. Davis. Not Dale. Uh, Dan or? Dan. Dan Davis. Mm -hmm. Bob Kurtner. I was still awake at 1 o'clock in the morning trying to figure his name there, and I actually had talked to you. <laughs> that finally yeah. hit me. Uh, yeah, yeah, that was. And Bob did. Bob came to Roger Strand. Him and Harold Stein was the plant manager. They came the same time. And that was probably in '67, '66, probably '67. Yeah, I remember. I had some of that stuff. I know. I had a notebook in there. Yeah, and also had a book. Had a book. Had a couple books. They're here, they're here somewhere. I've got to find them. I don't know where they're at, but they're here somewhere. And he came, uh, Kurtner and Stein came to Covington from Cleveland? No. Stein came from Pickway and Kurtner came from Sydney. They were 
just hired him. Oh, I see. Who's this Ned Brees? You ever heard that name? Ned Brees. Uh, Dick Zindor? Yeah, that's it. Uh, what did he do there? He was a uh, one. You don't know what, uh, remember what uh, department? All over. One head, one woman, one head, and four people. I just left the lady had some drums. Beverly Moore, Pleasant Hill. She's with the band boosters from uh, the name of the school. Newton. Newton. Yeah, she she just called her. There are fourteen by ten marching drums. Three of them. And then the bass. There we have a couple fourteen by tens. Be nice, nice for parts. Good sounding drums. Name, bad shape. What they needed. They weren't ready to play, but you know. Dick could mm -hmm. tell you. Man, Dick got fired. And, uh, he got fired a lot. He went to Dayton. That's what I did that time. But he was probably there when I was the first one hired him. Dick Covington? At that time, Joe Whiteneck was a general foreman. How do you spell his last name? You know? Joe? Yeah, Joe. W-H-I-T-E-N-E-C-K? Whiteneck. W-H-I-T-E-N-E-C-K. General foreman. He was a general foreman. Until Harold Stein came in. White man left, what, a bar up here in town. He's dead. White neck is general foreman until uh, Stein? Stein came along. And a lot of stuff was in that desk over there. Did you look in there? Yeah, I looked on through that desk. I looked down in the basement. I looked. There used to be that bottom door over there. Yeah, she said that she, she would never throw them away. They're here somewhere. And this is that one that, uh... That's the last custom made. Joe was working on. That's the... Joe was working on... That one? Oh, it's just, uh... Tinker and trying to create something new. I think you already had it. I think that's the final product right there. It never went into production. No, he died. He died. Hmm. A lot of bad sound of snare. I'm going to write this one. Go to number three. Uh, Joe designed that himself in that little shop up there. Mm -hmm. So he designed it, but down the Sonic. It's a little mad. You know why he makes it all that? Right, Joe talks it. Oh, what's going to say? I think it's probably about three and a half inches. Mm -hmm. Two and three quarters, maybe? Mm -hmm. I bet it's heavy. Yeah, yes. It's a with, uh, cast iron. Next, I'll think it's oh, okay. The right. strings are probably stretched out. Stretched out by now. It's 
So that's that uh, camera's on number three, designed by Jay Thompson, adjustable butt. Got your uh, kick off. You know, that'd be great for kids uh, starting up drum lessons, carrying it to yeah, it didn't take much school. Room. It's not heavy. That'd be an interesting piece of production. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I bet that could, that sucker could sound nice. Mm -hmm. That's a quick response. Real high pitch. It's not a quick as a Don Sony, but it's quick. I'm holding one piece. Goodness, what is it? An iron shell. That's cast iron. Hot metal, looks like. Is there anyone ever seen him around? Yeah, he probably didn't get it in production. Yeah, depending on what he was going to charge for it, uh, it may have uh, <clears throat> may very well flown. I think it would have. Internal tone control. He probably went through that thing there. Oh, well, let's see this whole house, Jeff. I Oops, better be a tape measure in here. I got one here somewhere. Oh, uh, I think. Did Glover change to that if Roger changed to? Yeah. Or that's who bought him out? Yeah. Huh. Hey, this is our competition. CP, CBS, a bunch of no nothings. Bought him out and blew the whole deal. Sure as hell did. Yeah, because they're still in business. Upset me, that who was out of job. Oh, Bill Ludwig sold out to uh, Selmer and made other instruments. They're still they're still making some, some good stuff. Uh, Slingerland kind of slacked off and they changed hands a few times and now they're finally making some good stuff. Uh, Gretz, they're still going, going along. 1883, they're still going, if you can afford them. Uh, we got some new comp, that's the one. Who am I forgetting? Leedy, they went, they went out. They, in 1930, they sold to Kahn. Then they sold to Slingerland in 55, and by 65, Slingerland still owns the name, but they quit using it. It takes care of all the American ones, except for, there's a couple new ones. Most notably, a drum workshop on top of them. Makes some really great stuff. It's two and a half. That's a soprano. Sure. I still have that. Him and Bill Davids worked on that. Bill David was uh, kind of working in and taking Jim's place. You think you okay? At that time. He went to California, but he got out and went in. He was professional during that. Yes, huh? He was, uh, in fact, the letterman came to ask me to use a date. And he went in the drum stand up drum set. So when they stood up the set, the only guys could play. Yeah. Bill and I designed a drum set for him. Snare was mounted on the base. Snare was mounted on the base. This had a symbol on it. I think that's all it was. It's a snare symbol and that bass drum. I remember that. And it was all set up that he could just stand and play off at the side like this and still sing if they had a three. Play two drums, a symbol, and sing. <laughs> so that's. I had a picture of those guys with that drum set. I don't know if I made either. Now, this Bill Davids, he was uh, kind of an understudy. Understudy for Thompson? Mm -hmm. Did he have official title? Or? Mm -hmm. I don't know. We didn't have titles back then. <laughs> 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 you knew who was the boss then? We just knew who the boss was. Uh, yeah, I was going to check on that. 
That's... I talked to Mary Nichols. Oh, did you? Yes, Mr. Mary. Yeah, she has absolutely nothing. Other than the, uh... There it is. Stillwater Advertiser. I found a back issue that had very little on Joe's funeral. I just mentioned it, you know, just a column like this, and then page seven, there's maybe two columns like this. I think I'd really like a big write up there. See who all was there. I'm sure there's well, a lot of people there. I imagine Pickle Carlin. Okay, something like that. Yeah, Pickle Library there has all the Pickle Data Calls on the over there on the microfilm, and you can copy. I'll have a copier right there, too. So if you. They'll probably tell about the fire, about the edge deaths, and maybe the expansion. Could they, you know, back maybe in the CBS taking over, like where that was. Pickle Carlin, yeah. They can narrow it down, with, you know, if I have to look through a whole year. It can go pretty fast through there because I, I use it a lot. I love to get it and to it. But, uh, you know, back in, in the 60s and 50s and 40s, little news was big news. So, you know, how today it would be a little paragraph. They would write big stuff on that. I remember one day, at, and then Punch Press, they were at AMT. They didn't have a no safety thing at all. One of the guys' name was Bucky. Bucky. Uh, what was his last name? Bucky. Once you got it, 
on, then you could go around and tighten up. But you, you wanted to go from here to here, here to here. Yeah, keep from getting the head. Yeah. yeah, they like to have the uh, the hoop part of the head off the shell equally as they can, I suppose. Floating up there. Now this is, what they call this? Wood? Wildwood. Wildwood. They injected the tree with a dye. Mm -hmm. and they grew up with them like that. What, what kind of tree do they use? Maple? Or? I don't know what kind of tree it was. I I tell you where it came from, Fender Guitar. So CBS owns the Fender Guitar. So they wanted a drum shell to match Fender Guitars. So that's what they made the guitars out of was this type of stuff. So they so they started designing drum drum shells. So they could sell it as a match set. Guitar. Rogers dress. Yeah, that's the, about the only musical instrument that's really sold after it. Yeah, there's Fender Japan and there's Fender USA still. Yeah, they mix some in Japan and some in a, at least one other country. My mm -hmm. boy was explaining it to me one time. Yeah, a friend of mine plays uh, bass, and uh, he was telling me that Fender USA is a uh, very high quality. Very rare. They had a machine down there on, on the ones on the uh, drum rims that had uh, the grooves in them where they put the pearl. Yeah. They put it on that machine and pull that thing this way. And it was like a router. It got that groove in there. And we had a guy, he was from uh, Julius Supos. He was from. He put that pearl in there, and the whole time he'd sing Hungarian songs. <laughs> oh, oh, no, no. no. <laughs> oh. And they cut the pearl there? Cut the pearl. Put it in. Okay. It's going to turn it upside down. Mm -hmm. I'm in a 4 by 8 sheet. Um, something's something, 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 something on it. Something I'm pretty, that's that. pretty close to that. Big, long. Oh, come in sheets out. Come in sheets. Single, single sheets. Huh. Not rolled. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's too, too stiff. Yeah, roll yeah. it up. We had to be careful when it's cold out. It'd break like crazy. Yeah, I found out what heat would do to it. Oh, yeah. It's mm -hmm. very time. It's like it's the bubbles on them, then. Huh? Especially when they're on a drum shell. Yeah. And they had that fire down there. They had bubbles sticking out them bass drums. <laughs> Yeah, I was trying to get the pearl off the one in the basement. I use the air dryer and take my time. It takes a while. And there ain't no other way, you know. They're going to go up like a keg of gun. A friend of mine was a painter down there. He <coughs> lived in 67. Marvin Thompson. And what was his first name? Marvin. Marvin Thompson. Um, he was a heck of a painter. You know how you paint that deep? He had, uh, see, I forget what set that was. Maybe it was a century. Blue, silver, blue, paint. Okay. Mm -hmm. Kind of an overspray book. For effect. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they, 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 they paint that top around blue. And they'd spin this thing around that table and hold that grid in the center and get that silver. And well, I they did the center last. Uh, they did, I, I'm pretty sure. Well, that makes sense, really, because that'd be the... So they did silver and gold, if I remember right, silver and gold. Or blue. And it, was, it was silver and blue and black and gold. Okay, I remember this. Yeah. Swing when you did that, too. Like I said, the luxury fence in there, too. Yeah. So you um, he painted all the hoops and... and um, one guy painted it all, huh? and for a while anyway. Yeah. In fact, that's probably the end of this book. Oh, yeah, there it is. Oh, it's the you have that book, Dan. I know I do. But in that good condition. <laughs> Kidding. It's the one I used down there. 
They're, I guess they're trying to show off all these right, pearls right here. here. What are you talking about, pearl? Oh, is that pearl? Yeah. Okay, I'm sorry. It's the same color as that. There's one. Yeah, there's one. It's a Luxor. This is yeah, bottom Luxor. lines. Luxor. Luxor. Yeah, okay. And the tower. Mahogany. They, they painted their own mahogany drum shells. That's paint. That's not real mahogany. Painted. Not stained. Painted, yeah. Well, it's, it says a stain. Excuse me. Then they go up to the power tunnel and down the screen. So what we got back here in there? That's basically watching stuff. Same kind of all. Oh, no, this is guts. Gut in here. Yeah, available nylon snares, wire snares, and gut snares. They were hell to just. Yeah. I had a hell of a time with this. I do that. It's a time consuming. Very time consuming. Yeah, I was just looking for maybe another example of a, the fade paint job. There's one there. Uh, we're getting into hardware here. There's the pearls. It's marching drum that lady has with this solar spark on there. There you go, Roy Burns, Billy Cole. Yeah. Ray Burns. He worked down there. Worked down there? Mm -hmm. what, what kind of job did they give you? He was a salesman. Salesman? A uh, promoter. Set up all kinds of uh, shows and demonstrations. And we were yeah, he was a hell of a nice guy. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, we started making those, uh, those things. Uh, we went into uh, the Tiffany. I started testing those before I went to Dayton. And on the way down, to, before I'd go to Dayton, I'd have to stop in and test what they had built up and then go down to Dayton because they didn't know anybody else could do it. These at one time were all hand stitched, all made there. Not to be this one. Mm -hmm. This was all set right there. Assemble all the foot pedals there from Covington? Yeah. And this is the new stand. That's the one that we started selling on ourselves. That's the one Joe designed there. Yeah, that's the one Joe. I got one of those. All this stuff, Joe uh, redesigned this. Uh, of course, this is a little matic. Oh, that's part of this here. Yeah, the uh, greatest the innovations, I guess, of Rogers was the hardware. Yeah. Nothing. Rhythm, done some frame. And they're still making that. Oh, a they? company called Rhythm Tech. Mm. And, uh, it's a really foolproof, uh, really foolproof setup. Here, I'm going to choke the head with anything. Just put it on and it goes. Just uh, Everybody assembled, I've seen the key sitting there. Everybody assembled the drum down there had a special key. It had one side of this here cut off and it had it come out. And up like yeah, so when you you could spin them things around real fast. You can with the legs or head screws on the end of the leg. I thought it was missing and what was sticking up? Uh, they had a little it was an L shaped piece of tubing oh. soldered on the side of it. So they could just okay. spin that thing. Those are in existence now. Are they? Yeah. They, and that was something jokey about right there. Was that on a swivel? A handle? On the scroll. That's all it was with a round piece of metal yeah. soldered on. Grease your hands. They cut the key off and soldered that thing on. That's all it was. Yeah. If it could broke, you went downstairs to the basement, told one of the guys, I need a new key with a handle on it. They soldered another one up for you. Speed key. Yeah, speed key is all it is. I had one of those. I don't want to do it either. Did they make one now that <clears throat> it's really fast? I have one. I don't use it, but it's here. I can come in tonight with something. I decide. Here's what I use most of the time. A couple of letter or two. This one is for adjusting the gut smears. Oh, yeah. I never seen that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I have one that's a Yamaha. It sticks up about like this, and it has a handle this long for high torque marching and stuff. Oh, jeez. Mm -hmm. I don't want to let the kids get a hold of that. 
I should be kids so over. Scared just getting right off, wouldn't they? By one way or another, they're going to bust something. They're going to yeah. pop something. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> Heck, I even thinking about designing a t-shirt. Oh, yeah. That design before they have uh, some kind of town festival or some festival here. When is that? Yeah. Heritage Festival? Heritage Festival. Heritage Festival. Hello? I bet you could sell a bunch of those. What do you think? Yeah, what you need? I'd just like to have one for me. Well, you got a place in town that does t shirts? I'll let them have a little sheet and match. I'd just like to see one in existence. This new place uptown does have not test can. He's more familiar with everything than I anyway. It's a festival. Yeah, I got to think about that. I'd like to have something like that to wear to the Chicago Drum Show. I'd like to have baseball cards every day of the week. They still have it in Chicago, don't they? Yep, and there's, and there's uh, guitar shows every every day of the week or so, you, depending on where you're going. The drum shows, there's only one in all world here, and, there, and it's not very big, but... I can, you know, I thought that would be neat. Yeah. Over there, the guys would be screaming. Where did you get? We don't have any of those Tiffany stuff. I didn't see any Tiffany stuff in there. We started making those to, towards the end. You have the seat. I don't know what you ever happened to that. It's down in the basement. When you have yeah, kids, yeah, things get used a lot. And we, we used to set them things up and play them all the time. We had them set up on time. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Roger's drum set at home. But there's some. I got a couple of 5 by 14 power tones, but they were made right around 70. I didn't make a note of if they're Dayton or Fullerton. In 70, it'd be made in Fullerton. Fullerton. They got C clips instead of springs. That'd be California. Mm -hmm. They didn't have a price sheet in this, did they? No. It must have been a. In that day and age, maybe a separate. Yeah, it was. It was a, it was a separate. Yeah, chain. Now, you go back in time, they had it all in one. I got an R380, and that's what I want in there. 77, maybe. I didn't even know a forklift operator. He was seven foot tall. He just picked up the things up and set up on the shelf like he was nothing. Yep, yeah, that's an interesting piece. I noticed the uh, tension rod can go off the clothes. Of course, this being uh, you know, not in full production or anything, it might have changed that. You know, we used to get all of our plating done, and everything was would come in, it wouldn't be plated. So we'd have to take all of our plating in order to pick the platers. Pick the platers, that was the name of them? Or, you know, never. I think it was called Pick the Platers. It's on 2nd Street. We used to go pick up stuff there. So it was plated. A friend of Jim's that ran the place. His name was Ralph. I mean, I'm thinking back 27 years or longer. Almost 30. Mm -hmm. I'm telling pictures I could find. That's me. That's where I tested all the mm -hmm. snare drums, field drums. I just set all the Donasonics perfectly before they left the play. So it's a good idea anymore. You know, they don't really tune drums. When they leave the factory, they leave it up to you. After they left, I had guys, professional drummers, call me at the house and ask me if I could tune up their drums for them. I couldn't believe they got them shipped, ready to play. Yeah, I believe that. <clears throat> I was going to put them. At that time, there was a lot of. I knew a lot of pro professional drummers that didn't date me. And uh, I was going to put an ad in the paper, you know. 
Because I started testing, tuning. I did have a couple of guys come in the house here. I guess I tore them completely down. Uh, yeah. I did them for them. Even if they, they seem to need a tune up, any drum. I mean, I get drums from, you know, like the school. If I go through them, I mean, like the uh, lug casing, the screws, of the lug casings off the inside. It was tweaking up something. Like that. So you know, it's so me off that these kids that went and uh, just these field drums for these high schools around town. Yeah, they'd leave the factory all tuned up, ready to play. You go to a football game and you see them same drums and they'd have these dang on pads taped to the top of them, give them a dead sound. You know, actually, this drum's from Dave. Yeah, <laughs> this makes it sound good. They're, yeah, contradicting themselves. Oh yeah, there's this. I mean, the only the only thing you really have to do is take the ring out of it. You can do that without even. Yeah, you don't you don't have to do that stuff. Yeah. Right. I think some stuff's got to be turned down. When Joe took some, train, some stuff. Yeah. When Joe trained me to uh, adjust things, honestly, I forgot to kick off the snare. And and evidently, I have a pretty decent ear, just like Joe did. And I'd have to go around and adjust each one of those lugs, uh, the area this lug. And make sure each one is down the same all the way around that head. That'll make the drum sound great. And that's how we, that's First, how we you got to back off the tone control and knock the snare yeah. off and everything. Yeah, that's here, right. So I loosen it, I tighten this here, and I tap it, and I go over here, and I go over here. Mm -hmm. And just back and forth until I got it all sound the same. Reminds you of the Rogers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, all the hoops are hanging overhead drum shell stacked up like that. How'd it keep them from falling over? Put something in there. Pardon me. Mm -hmm. Stacked them on there. <laughs> Be careful, huh? Mm -hmm. uh, darn it. It wasn't, the factory wasn't divided up in departments like they do today, you know, so much. Uh, he was assigned to a job and that's where he stayed. Like we had, uh, mostly all the, the old women worked up front doing all the, the uh, like the uh, beaters. And uh, at that time, we also made the keys for several of the keys for the uh, banjos. And they had a little machine up there to cut the gears. You know how the gears are that go through the key when you tighten up yeah. the strings? They had a little machine up there, and that thing would cut them gears that go around. And little cutters in there, and it's all automatic. And just all these heads would come in, and just cut them grooves in that, in that little uh, round piece. And then they they put the screw thing on there, and then they're mounted on a uh, some kind of a board, keyboard, I guess it is. And they they did that up there too. They made that for trophy. Products. Oh, and then shipped them out too. I think Rogers got cut out of because the people would say people. Grossman owned the whole thing. Well, Grossman owned the whole thing, so. And when they, let's see, when they started the factory in 53, did that whole building already exist, other than that little addition in the back? I don't think so. No. Oh, you weren't? Yeah, you weren't there. No, the building okay, just right. for the drum factory. The, the building, okay, I remember now. The building, the, the front part of that building is up there now. I guess it is. I've been up there for so long. But, um, where built was built. Don Martin and a bunch of high school kids helped Joe build that building. I remember that now. That's And that's how um, Don got the job there. So it actually started over in the brick building. Okay, right. I think that had three stories in it. The basement and the second floor. Yeah, that did. That was where Joe did all this tinkering. Tinkering, and, and I imagine the early part of 53 or 52, whatever, Joe had persuaded to have Roger's drum transferred down here or whatever. Uh, they did the summer until they got to the now, if I go up there and look at that factory now, Roger's Drums is the same thing, only it had a second story. Yeah. And they built 
built that building, it was just a long, narrow building like this. When they built it? When they started, there was nothing there, right? Yeah. I don't know. I just, I think that's... This is 53? Mm -hmm. Half of that building was under basement. This part. Back part. Back part, okay. Yeah. Under as you, as you come in, as you come in the door, there was there was an office here, and up and and up to here, which were all the ladies, old ladies sat that did all the hand stitching and made those gears. And then here was kind of like a warehouse, and they had a shipping dock out here. And back here is where I worked. This was shipping on this side. And this is my little room here that I tested. And then, uh, and this here was, over here in this corner was paint. And behind the paint, let's see. This was all paint at that time. Because after they changed it later on. Then they had the assemblies behind that and over here is where they put some of the pearl. The first floor? Mm -hmm. What was up here? This was assembly. Putting the drums together. Wait a minute. That was later. Okay. The assembly was moved out to here, that's right. Maybe that was later. I don't remember. Yeah. It, assembly was out here. This was paint. This was assembly because this was the back of the building. Okay. And then back here they were... Paint, assembly, pearl? Pearl. Back okay. in this area. And what was up here? Um, I think that was also where they kept the, the stock. Oh, stock? For, for, for pearl and stuff. Then down underneath, you went down the stairs right here, which was all underneath, from here back. As you went in that first room, that was called the uh, tour die room. In the, in the basement. Mm -hmm. Now that overlapped the top building? A little bit came out in there. I don't know. This was the end. I got carried away. Now it'd be, it's a basement or a first floor? More well, it'd be, it was, Underneath, see the it, it sits on a hill. And you could see the windows from from the basement. Okay. So as you get down this hill, back part of the back part of the that's where it started. As you went down the driveway, you know this part here is all on top of the hill. From here on back on top, on the first floor was second story, so that was under the hill. You know I'm talking about. This is this faces the front. This, this is faces the, front. the hill. This is the front. This faces the highway out here. Now this faces the block brick building across here. Joe lives over here, lived over here. This is the hill that came up. Am I confusing you? There's another hill entrance driveway up okay, here. Okay, that was side. that was put in by Labor, uh, a new company. Um, it's Stanley now. So the highway would be out here. The highway was out here, yeah. and he came up the hill. Here was Joe's house, the brick building where he did all of his office stuff. Or it's the convince you know what I mean. And you just come over this way, and that was here's the entrance to the factory. And the uh, there was the offices in this corner. And there was an office up here in that corner. And then the basement. That was okay. Up. And then the basement when you went down the steps. This would be on this side, so the steps were over in here. Um, came into the tool and die room where we're done putting made jigs and whatever he had to make down there. And then, from, I think that was all in that area too. And then, uh, then the punch presses were started in this area right in here. They just went around the wall. And on this side were the welded, where the guys that welded the snares and 
the holders. And, it was over here? Yeah, it was on this side. So you had the punch presses on one side and the bloody guys welding on the other side of the room. That was in 53. Now, I'm pretty sure it's in 1966 they added this way. Out piece uh, south. And what was in the basement under this area? Nothing? Yeah, that's what this area was. Okay, so okay. You, okay. See, the building sits on a hill, I guess. <clears throat> no, I get you now. The first floor is up here. And about about right in halfway down or halfway down. This was all well that's down the hill farther. This is all down below the hill. I can show you if you go out there. So then they extended that building on out. And they moved back to space the space is a completely different direction than what it does now. Right wait now, minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, you're right. Okay. If you look at it now, let's see. Man, it's been a long time. Here's the highway, and here's the building. And you're seeing it. Because right now it's... Okay, yeah, okay. It goes out this way. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's right. Oh, okay, yeah. I'm getting my memory here. Yeah, that was cement block. Contractors put that up. Joe was out here messing around with a bunch of dirt on this side one day. He backed in after they had the wall up, backed in, knocked that wall, knocked talk that wall down. He had a little Ford tractor and he's always out there tinkering with something, you know, had a front end loader on the front. He's always <laughs> grinding over something. <laughs> so then all he done then was just uh, made everything, each room bigger, you know. Oh, yeah. So, okay. so because things got bigger. I mean, you know, good, or good rich. Uh, Roger started shipping three times as many drums, and, and they had to have it, so they moved. See, there was a stairwell out here and went down to the basement. So they moved all the pearl stuff back here towards the back. And on this side, I think, was the stairwell. And this was all assembly up in here. And then over here in this corner was little parts of assembly too. Like uh, foot pedals and on the other side of the stairwell. Back in this area there was drum shell stack. That's where the fire broke out right there. Okay, and then what was this over here? That's where it broke out? Yeah, this is, they had a bench here. They did all the, the head shells stacked up here. And then they had their pearl benches set in here. Is this Broadway or South Broadway? Probably this, this, is, this is East, East Broadway. That's right. Now, can I borrow these two? Sure. Okay, I'll need a zip code so I can get them back to you. Yes, well, I'll begin to help you. What is the zip code here? 45318. And I was talking to Marvin Painter that used to work here the other day or work. He works over at Goodrich too. And I said, that, what year did they quit making that drum heads over there? He couldn't remember what year, but he said he used to get them things and they put them in these barrels of water. And he, think, he said, that skin would start stinking and it'd have maggots all over it. It's when they're ready. And it stinks so bad, said, you couldn't believe it. I said, well, when I, after I got there, the only drum heads, they had drum heads that's already made, cut out and everything. All you had to do is weigh them down, you know, and soak them in, and put the ring on them. And, stuff. and they stink bad then, you know, I could imagine what the hell them things felt like before. <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, that's what their business was in 1849 or about. Imagine. Clear up into the 60s, making casting heads. They were the best on the market for a hundred years or more. Yeah, everybody used them. Mm -hmm. 
put their name on them. They're all Roger's heads. And they had to just enlarged everything then pretty much. Huh? Yeah, all they just moved things out further and they had they had more people they hired more people and and that's when the younger people started coming in. Because the old people, they were still alive and were still working there when they moved to California. I think some of them retired uh, before they moved down to Dayton because they didn't want to make that trip every day. The older people, you know, I'm talking about people who were there in late 60s. Yeah, something for the I guess my one Oops. oldest grand boy is going to. To take I couldn't get my boys, my daughter, to play drums. So I guess he's going to try them. So I guess he's going to inherit the wildwood. I'm going to have to go over every one of them again, I guess. Oh, yeah. Well, heck yeah. Tear them all down yeah. and start all over. New heads, top and bottom. New heads. Another yeah. hundred bucks right there. Uh, worked when I left home. It's got a little light on it. I got a bunch of batteries. But Sizes. Oh, I've got, I got, believe it or not, I got spare batteries, the same as the camera. It's, hey, I don't need it. Yeah, I've got a spare battery. It's not all that fuzzy. Camera can't focus in on close up and far away at the same time. So. I tell you what, let's sit back and I just do this. I'm thinking they moved to Florida or somewhere. Pleasant Hill is a Mrs. Alexander, is that her? Yeah. Oh. She can feed you a whole lot of information through that over here. Let's see, that's right. It's in my coming to that, I think. So that's the only drums you got left from the whole deal. That's a lot it's better than nothing. Yeah, I had two sets. I sold one. A friend of mine at work, his boy started playing. Mm -hmm. Wasn't enough, I'd part with one of them. I said, well, keep it in the wildwood. Yeah. I said, he can have the other. And then I didn't have a snare. The only snare I had was, well, these two and the uh, Donasonic six and a half inch. And I didn't want to give that up. He offered me more money than I thought. I oh, I this thing it. here is worth over hundred dollars. Me. So I went ahead and sold it. I should have hung into it. Uh, that one especially. That was uh, timeless. Kenneth, I think that's his name, Kenneth. How many are there over there? There's one, two, three, four, five, six. Hmm. Might not be there. Oh, it's in the I'll tell you, he's the one I told you that, hit, that the Alexander is a uh, captain or lieutenant or something over at the sheriff's office. Gary Alexander is his name. Might want to call him to see if his mother's still around. I don't know. Gary, huh? Gary Alexander. He'd be able to share his office. And where's the Pickles County seat? Troisi County seat? I'm going to see if I can find somebody who can make negatives from these positives locally. Man, we should find them old people. These the drum books that I have are really old. Yeah, because every few years something little thing changes. And heck, you know, even some of these I don't really have very many. We're of. down the bottom of that desk for for years. Yeah. She's cleaned them out and she put them somewhere. I went all over this place. I know there's a box of books around here somewhere, and I can't locate those. 
all the kids moving out, they take a little bit at a time. I'm sure they didn't take it, but I got still there's some of their junk down there, you know. Stuff moves around. So maybe it's in with that stuff that there's. I know they got school books and college books and everything else. Well, I, even, I even saved stuff for my kids. You know, something that, I have two attics and an upper attic. I don't put anything in there. I don't want, you know, it's, it's hot. I have a walk-in attic and a couple. Well, I don't know, there's probably three or four boxes in there. Kids, I save, stuff I save for the kids. That, uh, a toy that, uh, some toys you pitch, some you give away. Uh, Uh, I had uh, it just I select a few once in a while. You know, I did over the years name more it's like school papers or something. Slide them up in there and we'll toy and take the batteries from there. Some things they wouldn't think of uh, saving. I'm gonna make a trip one of these days with the truck load and I'm just gonna start dropping stuff off at their house. <laughs> if I had to call this uh, Ted Hartley guy. His mother worked there. His mom, his dad, uncle, Don Martin was his uncle, right? Don Martin's his uncle. Yeah, his dad did work there, Paul. Yeah, Paul, Eileen, and his sister. Now, he called on the, uh, the 7th, 301 Wintrick. Yeah, that's right. It's not to the street, it's the next street down. It's uh, the first street lives in the corner, Chestnut. Down here, go past this street, the next street, turn the right, the next street you come, I see, the second The next street you come there at the stop sign is right here on the right hand side. You got me? The streets turn right. Okay. Here I am, this is Ledlow. Alright, this is Winrick. Turn here on Winrick, go down to the stop sign, he lives right there. No, no, easy to find. I don't know if I give him a buzz first. I got his. I got his number. Let's see. 473-5418. Tell you a person that came here. Well, came here. K-I-N-G-E-G-R-E-Y. Her name is Ruby. I think you wrote that down. 473-2884. Oops. Yeah, but where? Yeah. Nope, there get it. Harold. And King Ray. And Ruby. Ruby is in my head. Yeah. They both work there or? Her, her parents are the ones that started there. 53 along with Don. That'd be her brother. Don King Ray? Don Martin. Martin's. Don Martin's sister? Don Martin's sister, George Martin, and another's name was Helen. Four seven three two eight eight four. Two eight eight four. You are a little when they make the still water advertiser out here? Yeah. Their house is the same driveway as Oh really? Each house that's right there. I'll, I'll probably call her later because this. Uh, yeah, she's probably still working. She's a mail carrier. Rule around. I imagine she would have because knowing George and Helen, George was a saver. So I imagine he would have. They she might have pictures and information. Yeah, this uh, Hartley was kind of expecting me. I didn't have to pick the wife up to the hospital. She's not getting out to the morning. My sister-in-law's at home anyway, so I got started early. I called up uh, you, know, you and Ted early, earlier this morning. And, oh, what the heck, on. I needed a starting point, so I did get hold of this lady in the band boosters out there and then called from there. Who's going to go see a pick one? Sam. Drill press operator, drill dub. It's for lugs. Now I mentioned the, uh, you know, for you the other guys, and he says, "Oh, you won't want any of my information. Those guys know it all." You know? And I said, "No, no, no." 
It'll give me a different viewpoint of the whole thing. Maybe. You don't remember him, though. Talk like he's missing some teeth or something. I don't know. He's a drill out there. Yeah, the old one. Drilled holes for the lugs. There's another guy missing Bradford, John Harmon. I don't know. John Harmon. He's still alive. H A R M O N, huh? He worked out there. What did he do? He worked in San Diego. Assembly. Yeah, even if I don't have anything other than the name and a job, I'd, you know, it'd be nice to print. Oh, I can give you all the names you want. It's just about them. Huh? It's just a matter of time. <clears throat> I can sit right here and rat them off. I can go from room to room. Okay, we're going to start up there in the assembly room, and there was, you already got Helen Martin. Helen Martin? I'll do it anyway. Okay. Ruby Cross. Jeannie Black. Okay. Irene Harmon. Those four are the original four women that started there at the beginning. Those the original four win women in 53 yeah. or? Yeah. Last one just died here not too long ago. They're all dead? Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Next room was Julius Sippos. He was the guy that put the uh, pearl on the Glued the pearl on the hoops. S I P P O S? Or? I think. I'm not sure. I suppose. I put it with a C. Yeah. That's still considered the assembly department. Huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And there was, uh, let's see, shipping room, there was Gladys uh, Alexander. We got her. Uh, Ralph Johnson. Shipping, huh? Mm hmm. Or he's dead. And there was uh, next room was uh, Arlen Thompson, painter. Space Shore, you got her name. And there was Ophi Shields, a relation. He's dead. And then John Harmon. What did Ophi do then? He was assembly. Uh, Harmon. John Harmon. Okay, assembly. I'm just going back with the guys that are pre-60. That's what you want, isn't it? One last. No, anything, Covington. Okay. Um, These guys, all everything you gave me so far is pre-60? Mm -hmm. um, well, I imagine there's people that came and went. It's probably a hundred of them or more out there. Yeah. Unless there's people who's there. So Stayed there till the end. You know, they didn't hire any. They never quit. Because it was local. And then Eileen Hart, uh, Hartley, that's uh, Ted's mom. She worked in assembly. And there was. Mr. Pre 60? Frank Walters. He was in assembly.
secretary, Dorothy. Do you know her last name? Dorothy Engel. Engel? No, it's Dorothy, uh, that was her name then. Dorothy, um, Dorothy and Jim's her name. Engel was her maiden name? That's her name when she worked there? Yeah, yeah, she was she was single because that same call it dated her. Yeah. I think I'm not just right angle. She was after 60. She she came probably in 65. She was young, younger than me. Started in about 65. Downstairs with Johnny Ellis. Downstairs operator. John. Johnny Clark, he was a bunch of press operator. Buck Buckingham. He got Don Martin's name. Freddie Waters. Bunch press? He was bunch press. I think he also welded. Waters? Walters? Walters. George Martin. He was a little bit everything. Probably general maintenance. We can put him down in this. Now, after that was after sixty, but after I was there, there was uh, let's see, Davis. You got his name. His wife's name was. Her name is Marilyn Harmon, I think. Marilyn Harmon. I'll put a question for you. Yeah. Um, Ted's sister. What did you there? He did work there. Oh, his mom and dad and uncle did. Mom oh, he said he had some pictures. Sister, mom and dad. Sisters? Sister and sister. Partly. Let's see. Let's see her sister's name. You don't remember her first name. Hartley. Billy. Billy Hartley? That was more or less the beginning of when I started out and before they moved to Dayton, you know. As far as personnel, I'm interested in Covington unless they're really, uh, you know, big shots. You know? Yeah. So that, that's more or less basically the people that were here in the 50s. I'll, uh, I'll probably miss a couple. Yeah, well, I'll, I'll pick them up. It's going to take quite a while. I'm going to rearrange them in the... Uh, Alphabetical order, so I can. I'll spend during, you know, I'll spend a week, free time during the week doing that, rearranging things. And I'll reorganize a few times to get the people in one area. In alphabetical order where I can find them real quick, and I got a a, a timeline I want to get together on, you know, Farmingdale, New Jersey, Manchester, New Jersey, when they started and left. And I need to get my hands on a picture of Thompson. 
I don't see how I can write a book without dedicating it to him. Yeah. What I hear. Wouldn't be right. I know he's got a brother. How about kids? Oh, yeah. Does he have any kids? Yeah. He's got a brother. His name was. Be an old guy. He was a younger brother, wasn't he? Jed Thompson, I think he's dead. Yeah, because Joe was born in the 1800s. I got his brother, no matter what. You got the Thompson out there. That's him. That's Ken. Probably playing now. His name is. He's still alive. He's probably the guy that went up there and fell over. Bought all the stuff that's left over from the auction. What the heck oh, you I did with it? I tell you, a guy. I think that somebody told me that he that he bought most of that stuff. And just left up there. Richard Thompson. Richard Thompson's his brother. Oh, well, I don't know if it's his no. brother or nephew. That's probably his nephew. He would probably know a lot about Joe, because he was up there a lot with Joe. Yeah, I need to find out more about Joe, for sure. Um, That's his nephew, then, huh? I'm not sure. Okay. He knows you're related to him. I think, it, I think, I think it's... I think his dad was Jed, and I think Jared and Jed was brothers. I'm not swear to it. Okay, okay. It's worth a call. Because they own property right side of each other. Yeah. And so I'm, I'm thinking, yeah. I'm yeah. A bit, uh, Gosh dang it. It starts in this. Where's it? Richard's phone number. Richard's. Richard Thompson's phone number in there? Yeah. He was smoking here if he went to my wife to us. Well, thanks. I just hold off as long as I could. Jack Slider. What's the number? Six seven six. Six seven six. Yeah. Okay. Two seven four two. Jack Siler. Yes, S I L E R. Yeah. I'm pretty sure he was at the auction. On <coughs> you could call him and ask him if he has any of that stuff left over from the Rogers drums or. Uh, somebody told me that there's some guy there just buying up all that stuff. And I think it was Siler. Wonder what the heck you do with all junk. Well, he he collects all kinds of old stuff. He's an antique man. So he just might. Uh, it's probably going already. Right well, other than a photograph, it really doesn't make any difference. I'd like to have, if I just pick up a few pictures of the inside of the factory. I can still get your old good day. He's a short guy. I always wore one of those old felt hats. It was always cocked on the side of his head. He had a gold tooth right here. He was old when I started there. Yeah. 18, what, 96 or something? <laughs> yeah, I visited his uh, gravestone, snapped a few pictures. His wife was a good looking lady. He was in, there was a guy, two guys that worked for, well, one guy owned a you know, music store here. Him and Joe were partners. His name was Betty Etter. I think his wife's still alive. She was right over here. She must be a hundred. Hmm. Uh, he, he, he's been dead for years. And then there's a guy that worked for Betty that, that uh, repaired horns and whatever, you know. And him and Joe were pretty good friends. His name is Right out here, just This thing is.
Bidier, or what was that? The lady's name? The music store owner's last name? Edder. Edder? Oh, okay. There's probably a million Edders in here. Yeah. Laura. That's her. No, 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 no. ML on Adams Street. H. Edder on Chestnut. Hmm, that's it. Chestnut. That's it. That's the first one. Just had M out in there somewhere. It has H. On H. Helen. Helen. Was it Helen? No, that was Joe's wife. Talking about that guy the other day. Like I said, she's pretty old, but these are Donny Sonic snares, huh? Mm -hmm. Oh no, those those are uh, power tan. You could use it. These are about the same as Donny Sonic snares. No, let's see. Now they had two strands together. He messed around with, a lot with. Uh, kind of thinking. He messed around with, with different types of snares. He come up maybe have three strands here and then skip about three and have three here and then just to get different sounds and stuff. And he tinkered with that shit a lot, you know. And he'd switch around maybe have two out here and skip one or something. He just kept tinkers with stuff like that. He's, he had all kinds of different kind of snares up there. The, uh, the one time, <clears throat> I don't know what company it was, but they had wire, and they faded at an angle into gut. Oh, yeah, I see that. Wire gut combination. I hate to work with that gut. I think it's out on the porch and get a couple shots of it. Sure. At Wildwood, uh, I'll think of that guy's name in a minute. The only problem with it was matching the damn thing up. Yeah, because you know, I forget how many, before I come up with that set there, I forget how many shells I went through to try to get a similar Chevron version. They got that problem all the time. But you couldn't get the same colors. They had some really neat look ones. This, this one here isn't as neat as most of them. But the base drug for this, I like it. Got a lot of orange and green in it. <coughs> I mean, really contrast, um, you know, it's really stuck out and, and hit you. But see, they, that was popular, so that went fast. I'd be better off in natural sunlight. Well, what, whatever lights out there is always better than. Just get maybe about three close ups of it. Yeah, what? Oh, Joe and Vinny in, in this room, Scott, they design. They would design different kinds of horns and stuff, just tinkering around and stuff. Rhodes, uh, did he work in the factory at all? No, he worked. Uh, for Vinny at Reptile Music Store. Now, he's still alive. Where he's at, I don't know. He was, up till last year, they owned this greenhouse right outside town. See, if I only get one example of this one, it'll be I'm all out. It'll be worth a picture, I guess. About the base drum. Yeah. Get more walks. 
action. Put the top top in there. Get a hold of that Rhodes, he would have a lot of background. Rhodes, yeah. See ya. Okay. Can't remember his first name. Well, if you're lucky, he's the only one in the book. Oh, wait a minute. Rhodes, oh, yeah. millions of them are yeah. OAD, yes. Here, uh, we've been the old book, but that's a new one. He's named that code from last year. Yeah, that comes at 16 by 16. 